Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael. I'm here with Liberty Larry, and we'll be your host tonight. How's it going? So, uh, we wanted to talk about Venezuela. Probably this entire episode will be about Venezuela. There's a lot going on down there, and um, it, there is uh, certainly U.S. foreign policy implications here. Probably where it started. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, so, uh, for anybody who has been living under a rock, um, there is a, a coup d'etat um, actively going on in Venezuela right now. And the U.S. is supporting the opposition, um, like we did in Iraq and Syria and Libya. And you want to keep list naming this? on yeah. and on. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, there's reason to be concerned. Um, the... Uh, Actually, I don't, I don't know where to start from here, really. I, I wrote an article in June <coughs> of uh, 2018 um, kind of foreshadowing this, or, or at least setting up that... I, I saw a setup uh, for the U.S. people by the government for the, the people to, to get behind maybe intervention in Venezuela. It's just the, the signs were coming up. Um, we rejected the results of the election. Um, there was talk that, you know... Um, that you know we may need to get involved in this uh, illegitimate election and make sure that democracy was was done <laughs> which, <laughs> I guess. which is just horrible anytime we interfere in things like this all we ever do is make things worse i mean it's just <sighs> and that's really the the fundamental well actually that's not even the fundamental point the the fundamental point comes before that i think the the question is um, do we have any right, the U.S. government, does the U.S. government have any right to interfere with the, with the politics of another sovereign nation? Um, I mean, right now, the media is going on and on still, like they have been for the last two years, about Russian interference in our elections. And the Russian interference in our elections was that they ran some Facebook ads? That's I, Pretty well the Thanks. gist of it. Yeah. Um, and that they spent far less on their Facebook ads than either of the major parties did, but somehow that affected the election. Yeah. Let, let me say this, and I, I've actually suggested this to the Libertarian Party. I, I think in the um, congressional hearing they found that the Russians had spent something like $100,000 on Facebook ads and like 40-something of it, of 40-something thousand of it was after the election. Yeah. <laughs> right. So they they were were supposed to believe, and this is getting a little off track, but we'll, we'll come back around. around. Yeah, bring <laughs> um, around. We're supposed to believe that with something like fifty six thousand dollars in Facebook ads, the Russians managed to swing the election for Donald Trump. Um, now I've suggested to the Libertarian Party that uh, we should put three times that one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in Facebook ads into the next election because if it only takes fifty thousand dollars. To swing the election in your favor, hey, we can we're gonna, we yeah. can afford that <laughs> exactly. We can move from the the three percent that we got yep. to a majority into the presidency. I, I can't wait. <laughs> but <clears throat> at any rate, so the media has been going on and on complaining about how the Russians interfered with our elections and that this is some terrible, terrible crime, war worthy. They're saying. Oh I mean, yeah. This is a I mean, declaration of war. That this we're, is we're talking about you know, an attack on our democracy. <coughs> Meanwhile, they are fully behind our intervention in Venezuela, um, immediately recognizing the opposition leader as the new president uh, in this attempted coup. Which I have to remind everybody, this man was sworn in on the streets of Venezuela. Declared himself, by the way. He swore himself in on the streets of Venezuela. So if if that doesn't make him the right, the the true leader, I don't know what does. Yeah, I mean, Pence and Bolton, I guess, and Pompeo, and all these guys getting up there and saying uh, that... We need to support the legitimate democratic leader of Venezuela in Juan Guaido. Is it's just amazing to me. I mean, like, okay, so what we need to do is we need to support the legitimate democratic leader <laughs> who declared himself president, yeah, swore himself in over 
the man who won the election that six months ago won the election yeah. uh, with sixty eight percent of the vote. I'm getting ready to go swear myself in out on the streets right now. What yeah. you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> I, apparently that works. I thought the same thing. You yeah. Know? Um, so the you know the other part of that is that that they say that the election that occurred earlier in twenty eighteen or middle of twenty eighteen. Um, where Maduro carried 68% of the vote is illegitimate, yeah. um, that it was a fraud election and so forth. But there's no way of knowing because the opposition refused to take part in the election. <laughs> yeah. the, the opposition <laughs> boycotted the election. So, uh, okay, so imagine that happening in the U.S. Now, there's more than two parties in Venezuela. There were like four parties running, I think, that had like yeah. legitimate That candidates. were legitimate parties, yeah. yeah. Um, wish we had four legitimate yeah, parties. No kidding. I, I'd take that. Yeah, I wish we had three. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> so they they had like four parties that were running candidates that were getting votes anyway, yeah. something like that. And but imagine in the U.S. if one of the parties, one of the major parties, if the Republicans were decided that the whole clinton thing was just going to be unfair and so they decided not to vote yeah. in the election um do you think that the democrats might win the election <laughs> legitimately right. if the republicans refuse to vote that, that maybe i don't know and regardless it's it's hard to challenge an election if you refuse to participate yeah. so if you think that the election isn't going to be fair first off there's a whole there's, there's a, a process a plethora to, of to yeah. Deal with that. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a plethora of international options. Uh, bring somebody in as observers, th- you know, third party observers. Yeah. Um, the Organization of American States uh, is one that conducts uh, election observations, you know, yeah. throughout the Americas. So, was there any of that done in this election? Do you know? Not to my knowledge. Okay. No. I mean, I didn't know one way or the other. I, I think that you could very easily make the argument in the other direction. So, the, they're saying that the election was always going to be a fraud and so there was no point in them participating yeah now i think that you could easily make the argument the other way and say um they knew that they weren't going to win not because it was illegitimate but because because they they legitimately didn't have the votes they didn't have the people yeah and so therefore they refused to uh participate in the election because you don't want to lose badly in front of everybody absolutely right um and then they can (coughs) complain about it being unfair uh, but they chose not to participate, and their their decision not to participate makes it impossible for anybody to go in and check check the work as it were. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you if you refuse to participate. I'm sorry, you refuse to win. <laughs> like, I mean, that's just kind of the way it is. Yeah. So it's not unreasonable so, that with the opposition boycotting the election, that Maduro legitimately got 68 percent of the vote. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, now, and I'm not a fan of, of the guy, but uh, oh, well, you know, obviously. he's yeah. a socialist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, says so the opposition leader. Well, so, uh, so I'm not a fan of any of them in this scenario. Like, right. I mean, maybe I don't have a dog in this hunt. I'm um, just saying. He might be a little less socialist. He might be bribing. I'm not sure. I I couldn't find uh, support in the time that we had, so I, I don't have anything to cite exactly, and I can't remember. It was a source that I trust that I heard this from, but that one of the first things that um, that uh, Guaido did once he declared himself president was say that he was going to privatize the, the national oil industry oh, really? in, um, in, in Venezuela and open it up to us interests. Ah, well, so, you know, I, um, yeah, but if you're, if you're seriously trying to, to take out, to take over a country, wouldn't that be the direction you'd go? Wouldn't you want to suck up to the U S because that, you know, that's going to get you, Mm-hmm. further than anything else you can do almost yeah um i mean certainly the even the hint that there would be u.s military support uh gives will you, help your cause gives you sway yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely now that being said as it is maduro still has the military on his side yeah well and which that whole scenario bothers me in itself because i was uh, you're right i was reading that the other day that the, the military supports him but doesn't that ultimately just mean that the military has control? Because if he doesn't do what the military wants him to do... They just switch sides. They just switch sides. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, when you have this type of system, 
I mean, if 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 you have the if you have to have the mil- military support to hold your mm-hmm. position, mm-hmm. the military has control over you at that point. How do you think that would work here in the U.S.? I mean, do you think that a okay. that a president could maintain control if he didn't have support of the U.S. military? Well, it's a fair question. I mean, you know, if there well, was a challenge to as, the, well, if to there his was, leadership and he didn't have support, he of he would the, absolutely have to have support of the military. Yeah, well, so. I, it's the same thing here. I, I think that I think that that's an important point to consider, though. Yeah. It, and it's it's unfortunate that it seems to fall this way, but I I almost think that no matter what, you have to have the monopoly on force yeah. to maintain a government. You do. I mean, there's no question. Um, so whoever has the monopoly on force is the legitimate government, and that's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, that's unfortunate, and that's that's almost you know self defining anyway. That yeah. government has the monopoly on force, and so the group that has the monopoly on force is the government. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think that that's, yeah, I, that's a, that's a, I don't know. I, I think that that's just kind of unavoidable in yeah. this situation. So, uh, well, especially when you're in a situation where, where society is breaking down. Because mm-hmm. let's remember what's really going on here in Venezuela right now. I mean, they have completely rampant inflation. Like, oh, their yeah. money is worth nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and people are like starving to death. They're literally eating zoo animals. <laughs> well, and, you know, and that's what I've heard too. And I, you know, I'm a little skeptical of some of that. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I mean, I'm I certainly hadn't had boots on the ground in Venezuela, no, so I, and I, I don't intend to. By the way, yeah. Either. <laughs> yeah. Something um, tells me it's not a safe place for. Now, obviously, this is a economic disaster that they're going through down there. Without question, um, I heard actually as a while back, it was on Congressional Dish, and I don't remember who she was citing, but uh, somebody had gone down to Venezuela. I, this is just kind of a, a funny anecdote. I mean, it's not real funny. It's darkly funny. It's, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the you know some some reporter had gone down there and uh, was reporting on the situation in Venezuela and saying it wasn't really as bad as the American media was reporting, yeah. um, and that they had gone into a you know into a grocery store and it seemed fairly well stocked. Uh, they didn't have bread and they didn't have uh, like toilet paper, but the um, aisles were full of, you know, various other magazines and, and other paper products. And there were, you know, other like, you know, cakes and what have you. And so Jen Briney at Congressional Dish was saying, so, you know, I, I believe this person doesn't sound like it's so bad. And I immediately thought this sounds very much like a let them eat cake moment. Yeah. You know, and the the story being that, you know, they were saying, well, the, the people are starving. There's no bread for them to eat. Well, let them eat cake. Well, they can't eat cake because they can't they afford can't it. They can't afford it, yeah. right? And so, yeah, the Stock toilet shop. paper is gone because they bought that. That's a necessity. <laughs> you gotta have and, that. Yeah. You know, they the reason that they started um, making uh, magazines glossy is so that it couldn't be used couldn't as be used this toilet, toilet paper. paper. Like the, I think it was a Sears catalog or one of those early, you know, things <laughs> that went out. Um, that people just like got it in, in their mail and hung it in the outhouse. That's and so they started, Yeah, so they started making the pages glossy. I didn't yeah. know that. But that makes, I don't know. I don't know if it's true or not, but it makes a lot of yeah. sense. A lot yeah. of things coming together here. <laughs> that's, that's the way I recall that story. Um, but I, I got to take the shirt off. It's warm in here now. Um, but... Anyway, like the situation is obviously bad there. They they've had something like three million people flee the country in the last um, four years, three or four years. Oh, uh, yeah. There's like a mass exodus from Venezuela, so you know people are getting out of there for some reason. Yeah, and that's not because socialism's working, by the way. <laughs> all right, so some cat is destroying the door to this room right now. It sounds like. Might litter ah. in to reduce the property damage. <laughs> <laughs> um, go entertain yourself somewhere else. Ah, well, so, so where do we go from here? I got distracted. Um, yeah, bad economics, and and that's you know that's something to to say here too is that I, I don't support Maduro. Yeah, I, I think that you know I I don't want to see a, a an authoritarian you know, socialist government. Uh, the truth is, even if Guaida takes control, he's also a socialist. Yeah. And I mean, so we'll end up back here 
the the libertarians aren't winning in this one, but I mean it's really more up to the it's up to the people of Venezuela to figure mm-hmm. this out, and that's kind of the point. Yeah. Is that you know we don't need to be sticking our nose in this. I mean we just we've got no business there, and I mean the only reason we're sticking our nose in it to begin with is because there's a bunch of oil there. If it wasn't for the oil, we don't give two craps about this. Yeah. We just don't. Venezuela has the largest proven oil reserves in the world. Yeah. More than so, Saudi Arabia. So, so this is no coincidence that mm-hmm. we're all of a sudden interested in Venezuela. Yeah. There's other minerals too. Yeah. Um, and speaking of, like as long as, I'm sorry, I forgot to change the settings. <coughs> um, uh, speaking of this, the like getting involved in Venezuela is not a good, it's not just us in Venezuela. Yeah. I mean, we, we know that China and Russia support Maduro. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even sure that they support Maduro as much as that they don't want the U.S. to go in and take over another country. Yeah. Um, but part of it is that they, uh, the Russian government... Okay, so Sitgo is um, controlled by the Venezuelan National Oil Company. I, I forget what it's called. Yeah. Um, but like PVSDA or PVDSA or it doesn't matter. Right. Um, and uh, 49.9% of the ownership of the national oil company in Venezuela actually belongs to the Russians as collateral for loans that they've given to Venezuela over the last several years. Interesting. So um, one of these things that's been announced is that we're the U.S. government is trying to and I'm going to use air quotes here, legally <laughs> um, transfer control of <coughs> those assets that are outside of Venezuela uh, to Guaido and prevent Maduro from controlling those assets. Now, the idea there being that um, that Guaido can use those assets to keep pushing the coup. Yeah. Um, that, you know, money wins wars, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, <clears throat> but... <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I don't think the Russians are going to just let this go. <laughs> yeah. Um, they've Let's provided billions of dollars in loans to to Venezuela in exchange yeah. for this... A stake in this oil. Yeah, the stake yeah. in this oil company. Yeah. Um, they're not going to let it just go away. Like, they're going to want to collect their money back one way or another. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, it, we are involving them by making the decisions that we're making it like the u.s is involving the russians by making the decisions that it's making about what to do with venezuelan assets absolutely which again you know what right does the u.s have to control venezuelan assets just because they're outside of venezuela yeah. um of course you know we they clearly think that they control everybody's assets and the truth <laughs> is they do in a lot of ways i mean yeah. i i pay i don't own this property yeah <laughs> i i lease it from the government yep. essentially because if I stop paying my property taxes, yeah. I will not have this property anymore. Yeah. And people with guns will come tote you to jail. <laughs> yes. Yes, they will. And take my property. Yep. Absolutely. Which was apparently theirs in the first place. <laughs> exactly. So what happens when you don't pay your rent? <laughs> no, I, I'm not paying rent. I'm <laughs> Rent to the government. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I'm paying taxes. Um. Well, I, I would like to kind of shift gears a little bit here. I mean, still talking about Venezuela, but I, I just want to give some background on this. Um, so we don't have uh, we don't have active military, depending on how you define that, in Venezuela. Uh, but I would certainly make the argument that we have been involved in this from beginning to end. Yeah. I mean, there was already talk um, when I wrote that article in June. Uh, there was a New York Times article in September. Um, that revealed that the uh, the Trump administration had been having secret talks with uh, re- rebellious military officers from Venezuela about a coup. Right. Um, now, according to the article, the the talks ceased. That they, you know, they, they didn't, yeah. didn't continue with the yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. you know, here here we are. Exactly. Um, the uh, the U.S. was most likely involved in an attempted coup against um, Maduro's predecessor, Hugo Chavez, in 2002. Uh, oh, April, Chavez! Yeah. <laughs> April, <laughs> April 2002, um, there was a, a coup attempt then uh, that, you know, the U.S. immediately declared support for the opposition. Um, 
and the opposition, by the way, immediately dissolved all the democratic institutions in the country. They like <laughs> dissolved the National Assembly. They dissolved the Supreme Court. Uh, you know, depending on who you ask, you could say maybe luckily um, Chavez was returned. Uh, the his supporters were able to take back the presidential palace, which is a little weird in and of itself. But I guess the White House is kind of the same thing. Um, it's our presidential palace. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and Chavez returned to control. Chavez did handpick Maduro to be his successor, also. Yeah. Um, so this is a continuation, and in, in a lot of ways, in terms of uh, people's recognition that socialism doesn't work, I kind of wish um, that Chavez hadn't died. Yeah. Uh, because they a lot of like, this blame wouldn't be shifted. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Chavez was really well supported by the the you know socialist leaning. Um, people here in the U.S. thought yeah. he was great. And oh, since yeah. uh, Maduro took over, they have the excuse of, well, Maduro's not doing it right. Yeah. You so. know, he, he he's pretty much doing the exact same thing that Chavez was doing. He was yeah. handpicked by Chavez. But, exactly. um, that was his but guy. since it's yeah. collapsing under Maduro, not under Chavez, they can yeah. say that, you know, that he messed up Chavez's work. If yeah. Chavez was still there, everything would be fine. Which Which goes back to the whole reason why socialism will fail anyway because if it's so dependent on that person yeah being <laughs> who the, the leader person yeah. then then your your system's doomed to fail mm-hmm. yeah um i i certainly can't argue with that um well we can we can spend a whole entire episode sometime <laughs> later in the future about why socialism is doomed to fail yeah um, i think it's more about like giving up all those liberties uh you know, we talked on the last episode, and and we'll continue to talk about how <clears throat> those principles that we support—the um, personal liberty, free enterprise, and self-government—all go together. They they yeah. all require each other. Absolutely. Um, the political, economic, and personal liberty are interdependent. Yeah. Right. So, the the whole point of a socialist government is to take away economic liberty. Yeah. And in order to take a, take away economic liberty. Like everything else follows has to come with it, yeah. yeah. Maybe not all at one time, but there, right. there, the piece. Once you lose the first piece, the mm-hmm. others start to crumble. Yeah, the rest goes the bit way. by bit. Yeah. but we'll we'll address that sometime in the future. I, you know, for now, we won't even worry about like what kind of government it is. Yeah. the The question is, do we? Does the United States government have any right to interfere with the self determination of the Venezuelan people? Yeah. And I would challenge that it's a popular uprising right now too. Yeah. Um, you know, they got something like I think I heard like around a hundred thousand people protesting or whatever. But there's 32 million people that live in Venezuela. <laughs> um, and well, and my position is more power to them. If if they if the people want to rise up and overthrow that government, more power to them. They just don't need our help to do it. Is what I would say. Well, they're getting it, like it or not. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, they are, and they'll end up in the worst situation because of it. Mm-hmm. Well, I was I was talking to my my dad earlier today um, about this, and I said, you know, part of it is that for whatever reason, that this idea of American exceptionalism, yeah. and like I'm, I'm absolutely a patriot. I'm proud oh, of yeah. this country. I'm so glad to be an American. But I I'm glad to be American because of what the country was founded on. Yeah. And, you know, the principles that it was founded on that aren't necessarily represented well by our government today. Not um, today. And yes. one of those things is is that self-determination. Yeah. I, I think the idea of self-determination, of personal liberty, of self-government yeah. um, is a really important part of what made the U.S. exceptional in the first place. Yeah. And But now it's somehow used as an excuse to, you know, quote unquote, to, spread democracy. To seed freedom. And, yeah, and it's just not. It just doesn't work that way. You can't just give that away. It has to be earned. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, it's like nobody sees the irony of the you know we live free, and so will you. Yeah. And if you don't want it, we'll make you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ah, um, oh, there was a Futurama quote, and I can't think of it. Well, that's but a it shame. Was, but this Bender. That show should be quoted a lot on this <sighs> yes. particular program. Absolutely. Um. But, uh, you know, back to what's going on here in terms of our involvement, we had probably, debatably, we'll say, um, sponsored a coup, uh, a coup, not a coup, a coup, in 2002, 
Um, we talked about, uh, a, you know, supporting coups the entire time Trump's been in the presidency. It hadn't gotten, yeah. you know, all. The, I mean, it doesn't come up all the time, but it has come up more than once past, that he was yeah. willing to use military intervention to control Maduro or yeah. to get rid of Maduro or to, you know, for a regime change, essentially. Yeah. Which, you know, we like to do. Um, and uh, this guy, uh, Guaido, um, he entered politics, as far as I could tell, and I, like, I may have this year wrong, but I, I think he entered politics in 2010. Um, oh. And <clears throat> he, okay, so this legitimate Democratic leader of Venezuela, uh, of course, has never gotten a single vote for president. Mm. Um, and he didn't get a the National Assembly, he's the leader of the National Assembly. They say that the um, Constitution gives him power. Now, but they're doing it based on this idea like um, like our government, if the uh, president is unable to fill Unfit to serve. yeah, to to fill the duties or fulfill the duties of his office that this you know there's a, a chain, chain of succession, of right? Yeah. Um, oh, is that what their angle with this is? is yeah. That- Oh, okay. yeah. I actually didn't realize um, I, that. I, th- I think that's my understanding yeah. of it. I mean, I, I didn't go back and read their Venezuelan constitution, <laughs> but that's that's my understanding. And it yeah. came up in the documentary I saw the uh, about the coup in 2002 because uh, they were trying to make that argument then ah, as okay. well. Yeah. Um, and it was the same like section of their constitution that they were using they to justify were. it. Yeah. Um, but it's also like what comes up here in the 25th amendment that they will you know but the idea is that if the man is in a coma or um you know has open heart surgery and is out for a couple of days or whatever that this is somebody that fills a space it's not a justification for a coup <laughs> yeah right? right i have never seen a constitution anywhere that justifies a coup <laughs> yeah that has a, a clause in it about how to do a coup yeah um so although i will like to say i wish ours had well, I mean, it does. We have elections. Oh, well, yeah. And so do they. Yeah, that's fair. That's true. How often do they do their elections? Is th- it four years? No, I think it's it's five or six for Is the president. It? Wow. Um, but again, you know, back to this guy, Guaido, uh, the National Assembly. It, he's the leader of the National Assembly, and so yeah. that's why he's, he's taken, um, that's why he's declared himself president. Um, and I guess it's next in the chain, and that's how he's justifying it. But yeah. Uh, he, it wasn't a popular vote that made him leader of the National Assembly either. Really? Um, He's yeah. appointed to that? No, it's a, an election within the Assembly. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> there's, a, there's another caveat to this too. Alright. Um, so the National Assembly, the leader is rotated around the parties that are members oh. of the National Assembly. So it was his party's turn. Yeah, I don't know how many members of his party are in are in the National Assembly to begin with, but yeah. it was his party's turn to to be the party that had the leadership. That role. has the leadership, yeah. and and he was selected of the however many there are. Yeah, um, and uh, it's that's the kind of an insane way to do it. Yeah, so he's he's never gotten um he, he never gotten a vote from anybody for president. Yeah, uh, he didn't win a popular vote to be the leader of the National Assembly. Yeah. Um, I think he comes from kind of a smallish, uh, like, representative area that he even got elected by. Yeah. Um, so, so, so this guy's only taken in a handful of votes yeah. his entire career. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what's more is that he was, uh, you know, he was part of the student movement that has been, um, been cultivated, really, to be an opposition movement in this country. Yeah. And uh, so... Um, I, I heard this from Daniel McAdams on the Ron Paul Liberty Report, but I went and, and checked out the, um, these leaked emails on WikiLeaks, uh, about his group, the, what eventually became the, um, the Voluntad Popular, which yeah. is the, the popular will party that he's a, a part of, yeah. um, that they were, they were shipped out to, uh, Belgrade, Serbia in 2005, like this group of of students that included him yeah. um, to get training in regime change, essentially like, in, really? yeah. in in tactics for, for creating regime change. And the whole thing was funded by the national endowment for democracy. And that's like a whole nother rabbit hole. But <laughs> um, yeah. briefly uh, the national endowment for democracy is a, a non-government agency 
Um, but it's only a non-government agency to like avoid stickiness in terms of you know things like treaties and so forth that the U.S. <laughs> government might have with other countries. Yeah. Um, so it allows them to operate in ways that the U.S. government can't to to kind of you know be revolutionary or counter-revolutionary or whatever they they need to do. Um, yeah. The National Endowment for Democracy is almost exclusively funded by taxpayer money. Wow. So it's like, it's a non-government agency that's funded by the government to do things that the government can't do because of legal issues, <laughs> is essentially what it is. This is our workaround. <laughs> yes. Um, so, you know, this is this guy's background, and uh, you know, I, yeah. I'm... I would have a hard time getting behind him. Oh, and what's more is he did uh, like graduate work at uh, George Washington um, University here huh. in the U.S. Really? Um, and so he's a like, spook. Yeah, I mean, I I, <laughs> I have a a strong suspicion that this guy is a CIA asset. Yeah, and uh, and you know, and it certainly explains how he was able to get immediate U.S. support. Yeah. Um, after this you know, after this, the beginnings of this coup and how we're throwing everything behind this guy. Yeah. And, uh, now I, I said in the article that I wrote in June or whenever, um, that I was worried about them beating the war drums. Like when you start hearing the war drums, yeah. like pay attention to these things. These are the, these are the lines that were fed here in the U S to drum up support for these kind of, um, of interventions. Yeah. Now, it, right now, I don't think that we'll get involved militarily because yeah. it's not necessary. Yeah. Um, if they actually successfully transfer all of Venezuela's funds to you know prevent access from Maduro and give access to Guaido, yeah. then that's probably all that they need. Yeah. But again, I'm not sure that this guy actually has popular support. Well, and that's that's what I was fixed to say. I mean, do we? Do we really think that that's going to end up happening? I don't see Maduro walking away from this. I mean, he's as long as he's still got the backing of the military, he's not going anywhere. Yeah, he's not giving up easily. And I don't think he should. Yeah. And and that's the other point that I was going to make. Like if you want to live in a in a constitutional republic or a constitutional democracy, yeah. then when the election doesn't go your way, you don't get to coup. <laughs> yeah, you just got to wait till the next election. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You know, like all those lefties are doing right now. Exactly. In oh. this country. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, and man, are they going off, man. Yeah. So, uh, was there anything else that I absolutely wanted to talk about? Yeah. I, oh. think, I think we pretty well covered it all. Yeah. I, I don't see anything else that I... That I really wanted to say. You got anything? No, I think we're good, man. I to say. Okay. Well, I suppose it's time to wrap it up. I did want to kind of transition this a little bit into um, that uh, that article the, about the Ocasio Cortez stuff, but oh, we can um, take care of her another day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll address that some other time. Do we really need billionaires? Man, yeah. Good question. Um, it's, I can sum that up with one word. Yes. Well, you know, I mean, I think an argument could be made. I, I think yeah. an argument could be made that it would be a lot harder to be a billionaire if we had a real free market. Well, and that, there you go. Yeah. That I would... um, so I, I think that she actually has, there are some good things in that article. She's talking about the wealth tax. I think that that's like, if you're going to be taxed, yeah, that's a better way to do it. You um, so? Yeah. Well, because uh, taxing income pro prevents accumulation of wealth. Yeah. Um, it means that you can never become wealthy, yeah. it, and it it um, it inhibits the the people that are actually doing something productive. Yeah, well, like, I wholeheartedly agree with that. But um, how would this be any different? How would the wealth tax be different than an income tax? Yeah, like how do, I don't know. I don't. So explain to me how a wealth tax. Works, well, um, you you accumulate wealth through generating income, but you generate income by being productive. Yeah. At, at some point. You don't need to generate income anymore to be wealthy. Yeah. Right? Like, you, you just have and wealth. And so we just and you, tax those people? No, we, we tax everybody, but we tax based on wealth, not on income. Oh, okay. Right? So, like, a lot of things aren't 
aren't really considered income. Like there's a whole bunch of investment stuff that makes you that can make you very wealthy, yeah. but you're not generating an income off of it. You just you yeah. have a lot of assets. Assets, yeah. Right? And so you could I mean it's just like it's like the difference between a property tax and an income tax. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm taxed on my property because it's an asset that I control. Yeah. Um but being taxed on the property doesn't prevent me from buying more property. Yeah. Um, whereas being taxed on an income can, in a yeah. sense, right? Like, so yeah. being taxed on my income can prevent me from generating more income and more opportunity for other people to generate income, yeah. right? Because By limiting the amount that I have to invest in growing my income. Um, gotcha. Whereas my my wealth exists as it is. My, my yeah. wealth is the end result of that income. It's not... Hmm. And so you're basically taxed based on that, then. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, so I, you know, I'm I'm opposed to taxes generally because we yeah. see what our government does with our money. But, yeah. uh, like you know, things like the National Endowment for Democracy and what yeah. have you. All right. <laughs> but I, I don't think that that's a terrible idea if yeah. we're going to you know make some changes because we're obviously not going to end any kind of taxing. Yeah, we're a long, we're we're <laughs> way far removed from that. Now obviously. the problem with her is that she wants it as a, in addition to. Yeah. So you got an income tax and a wealth tax. And, you know, yeah. Which yeah. is part of the problem I had when Herman Cain came out with his nine 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 program because it it introduced a, a it what was it that introduced wasn't it a um I forget what the technical name of it is but it's where you tax um. Oh, it was a consumption. It was a consumption, ta- consumption tax. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why I couldn't pull that. Yeah, so he he had pr- proposed part of his plan was a involved the consumption tax, mm-hmm. and and the reason I didn't like that was because now we've just now you can make those numbers anything you want them to be. Yeah, we're gonna ta- we're, it's gonna be like a nine percent now, but when that's not enough to fund the government, next thing you know it's like twenty percent. No, know? that's crazy. Obviously, they're just gonna reduce the government budget to fit what they're bringing in. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, because that's always worked. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it that's always, what they always do. That's how it always plays out. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Well, um, let's go ahead and wrap this up then. Um, yeah, you can check out the, the article that I wrote on thelibertymike.com. Um, you can see everything that we've produced out there. Uh, it's only been a couple of weeks since we did the last podcast, so we're on schedule. Yep. yep. Um, Man, that's my word. We should be able to keep this up. And, and at some point we will hit weekly. Yeah. And we would like some feedback. So uh, if you have, if you listen to either podcast, you know, we want to know that you're out there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we do. So <laughs> give us a, you know, drop us a line on Facebook or, or you know, you can send it to my email if you listen to the first episode. And um, we'll be back uh, in a couple of weeks. So until then, live free. All right. Later. Ciao.